Hi everybody, this is Mr. Claus, and this is a quick review of the sun's path in the sky and how that changes as your time changes, as your month of the year changes, and as your latitude changes. So we're going to look at this celestial sphere here. What this represents is a person standing at a place on Earth, and this is the dome of sky above them. So this yellow line would be the path that the sun takes across the sky every single day. I want you to notice a few things. First of all, this little blue stick right where my arrow is right now represents Polaris and where Polaris would be in the sky. So you'll notice that if I change my latitude, well then Polaris changes. Polaris is always equal to your latitude. The altitude of Polaris is always equal to your latitude in the northern hemisphere. So here if I'm at a latitude of 90, well then my altitude of Polaris see the 90 degree angle I have set up here. Uh, if I change my latitude to about 43, 42.8 uh, is close enough, then you can see that Polaris is at an altitude of 42.8 degrees up in the northern sky. Now why is that important? Everything in the sky, including the sun, is going to make a circle around Polaris. If I change the view here a little bit, you can see that where Polaris is, my circle in the sky that the sun is, is making a circle around Polaris. If I change the altitude of Polaris, that circle and the angle it's at is going to change to still be a circle around Polaris. So, we're going to set our latitude to uh, us about 43 and move us around so we have a view with the north over on the left side here. The first thing we're going to talk about is how the time of day changes it. So you'll notice, as I drag my time through the time of day, that's causing the sun to rise in the east right here, and then it will set in the west. Okay? Uh, you'll notice that at noon, when I go to noon, my sun is always in the south in New York State. That's because the sun's direct rays are hitting in the south. I better look south to see the sun. This person is going to look in a southerly or south direction to see the sun. Uh, the other thing to notice is the shadow. So I'm going to change the angle a little bit here. Uh, at sunrise, when the sun is low in the sky, the shadow is very long. And then at noon, the shadow is very short because the sun is high in the sky. And then it becomes longer again as we get more towards sunset. And the sun is lower in the western sky for set. That's how time of day changes it. So I'm going to set this to noon and just kind of leave it. Now we want to look at how it changes with the month of the year. So I'm going to go to March 22nd or March 21st to start. And an important line here is if we draw an imaginary line, look where my pointer is between west and east. I'm going to call that the west-east line. Notice that the sun on March 21st rises right on that west line, west-east line. It rises directly in the east. Uh, we call that day the E equinox that it rises directly in the east. Uh, March 21st. Now as I take the month and I slide it to the summer months, because the Earth's axis is tilted and the sun's rays are hitting more north in the summer, summer months, that's going to take that rising and setting and move it more towards the north. So you'll see that here on June 21st, it gets as far north as it possibly goes. That's my summer solstice. Okay? And as I go through the summer, July, August is set rising and setting to the north of that west-east line. When I get to September 21st, which is the fall equinox, suddenly my rise and set is back on the east-west line. Again, it is rising directly on the east in, on the equinox. Now as I go from September and fall into winter, then my sunrise, sunset, is further south. So I get to December 21st, around the 21st, and that's my winter solstice. Now, a couple things to notice here, and I'm going to go back to my March equinox, my spring equinox. As I go into the summer months, and here's my summer solstice, notice how much more of the sun's circle that it makes once every day around Polaris. Not really moving in the sky, we're rotating, but much more of that circle is above the horizon. So my daylight time, I'm going to have very long days in the summer. If I set it to winter time, 
then most of that circle is below the horizon. I'm going to have long nights and very short days because only this tiny little distance is when the sun is above the horizon. So our last factor that affects this is our latitude. And I kind of showed you before, but changing the latitude is going to change where Polaris, again, Polaris is this little blue stick here, in the, is in the sky. And if we change Polaris in the sky, well, we have to change the sun's path because the sun's path needs to remain a circle around Polaris in the sky. So as I go to the North Pole, Polaris is at my zenith or straight up point and the sun's path goes horizontally straight around. As I go more towards the equator, you'll notice Polaris gets lower and lower in the sky as my latitude gets lower until it's on the horizon here at the equator. And then my sun path is a circle around that spot, as you can see here. So there's a lot to do with this. The best way to get better is to just play around. You guys always have access to this website. Uh, thanks a lot, and we'll see you later.